So if you have a vehicle and you think you have a bad starter relay, I thought I'd go over the symptoms of a bad starter relay and how you go about telling if it has failed. And so first of all, what is a starter relay? It basically allows the ignition, which has low amps, to control the high amps that the starter motor needs to turn the engine because the starter motor needs a lot of amps to be able to crank the motor over. And so to do this is going to need very thick wire going to the battery. But the ignition system is a much lower amps, much smaller gauge wire. And so in order for the ignition system to control the starter, a starter relay is used. And basically what happens is that when you put the key to the position, it's going to energize a coil that's going to pull down on a little lever and it's going to close the switch to the starter, which will allow power to go to the starter solenoid. This is going to be normally open, but when you apply power to two pins, it's going to close this gap and then it's going to allow power to come through and go to the starter. And so these wires going to the coil coming from the ignition key could be much smaller compared to the wire that's going to the starter. And so when this gets energized, it's going to close this, it's going to complete the circuit, and then power is going to go to the starter solenoid, which is going to spin the starter. And so what are going to be some symptoms if a starter relay fails? Well, the most common symptom by far is going to be that the engine just won't start. You turn the key to the start position and nothing happens. The engine won't start. The starter won't kick on. And so that is the most common symptom. Another thing that can happen sometimes, although not that common, is that if this contact gets stuck right here, it doesn't go back into normally open position, then it could keep that starter engaged all the time. So if that starter is constantly engaged, then this is one of the things to go and look for because this little contact got stuck together and it's not disengaging and it's keeping power going to that starter all the time. And another thing that can happen sometimes is that you get intermittent starts and that's because this contactor right here gets all pitted up and it's not making a good contact all the time. Sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. And so if that happens, you're going to get intermittent starting. But by far the most common thing that happens is that the vehicle just won't start up. And so how do you go about telling if the starter relay has failed? Well, other components can cause the same symptoms as a bad starter relay. Mainly like a dead battery, the starter won't work if the battery's dead. So be sure your battery's charged up, that there's no issues there. The connections are all good. The terminals and things like this are clean and that there's no problems with that. A blown fuse in like the ignition system or the relay fuse or anything like this can also cause the same symptoms. So check for any blown fuses. And a quick method that you can use to see if the relay's failed is that quite often there's other relays inside the fuse box that are the same. So for example, right here, this is the starter relay. And as you can see, it's 7234. And then you have other ones inside of there that's the same. It's very common that the horn relay is the same as the starter relay. So if you swap those out and then the horn works, then you know it's not the relay. And then you know whether or not you have to go buy one or not. So if you do think you have a bad relay, first thing to do is look and see if you have like a horn relay that is the same as the starter relay. And if it is the same, then you can swap it out. Another method that many people use is that they jumper the connections that's supposed to complete the circuit when that contact closes. Because when this contact closes, it's going to send the power through between these two pins. So if you jumper these two pins, then it would send power to the starter. And so when you do this method, what you do is you put the key in the on position and then you find out which two pins that need to be jumpered. If you look at the side of the relay, it'll be the one with like the little door symbol that's open. So right here, it would, it would be three and five would need to be jumpered to complete the circuit. And pins three and five would be right here. It would be these two pins. So you'd find these two pins. You get a little wire and then you jumper them. And if the vehicle starts, then you know the relay's bad. I don't really like to use this method too much. So sometimes you get sparks right here, which can kind of mess up these contacts sometimes. But many people do this, so this is an option. You can also use a multimeter to test the relay. And basically the way you do this is that you check for continuity, that there's no opening inside the coil. So you put the meter on the little ohm symbol just to be sure that this coil doesn't have an open in it. And then if you have little jumper wires, you could connect these two connections going to the coil to a battery, and it'll close this connection, which you can also test for continuity. So you can also use a multimeter if you want. And so that's basically it. I just wanted to go over the symptoms of a bad starter relay and how you go about telling if it has failed. If you have anything to add, please comment down below. If you have any questions, ask me and I'll try to answer them. If this video helps you, please click like, please click subscribe, and have a good day.